Here in the One Yard Revolution garden, I do my best to grow a lot of food without spending much or working harder than I have to. In pursuit of this goal, I carefully evaluate popular gardening tips before adopting them. If they don't help me grow more food or save time and money, I don't adopt them. I share my experiences with you because I know how challenging it can be to find the time and money to invest in the garden. And I want to help break down these barriers to help as many people grow food as possible. Of course, there are some things we'll always have to do as gardeners, like make sure our plants get enough sun and water and that we're growing in quality soil. But there are some gardening tips that most of us can probably ignore without any downside at all. And by ignoring them, we free up time and money for what really matters. Today, I'll cover four popular gardening tips that you can probably ignore. I know I do. The first popular gardening tip you can probably ignore is to use phosphorus fertilizers to increase blooms and stimulate root growth. You know a fertilizer is high in phosphorus if the p-value in the NPK is as high or higher than the other two numbers. These fertilizers often use bone meal, rock phosphate, or manures as a phosphorus source. The plants do need a small amount of phosphorus to grow. It's important to understand that phosphorus fertilizers only provide a benefit when there's an actual phosphorus deficiency in the soil and multiple university studies have shown that adding even more phosphorus does not increase blooms or stimulate root growth. Fortunately, phosphorus deficiencies are not common. If you are an organic gardener and apply compost and or mulch annually, it's unlikely that your soil is deficient in phosphorus. It's more likely that there's too much. That's what we found when we had our soil tested a couple years ago, and we're now attempting to bring down levels by using less compost and vermicompost. At this point you might be thinking, well maybe my soil does have enough phosphorus, but is there any real harm in adding more? The answer is yes. Excess phosphorus contributes to eutrophication in rivers and lakes, creating dead zones where aquatic life can't survive. This problem is often associated with big agriculture, but homeowners and gardeners contribute to the problem as well. Research being conducted at Washington State University is finding very elevated phosphate levels in home gardens and landscapes. So it's up to all of us to fertilize our gardens responsibly to preserve our lakes, rivers, and aquatic life. The second downside to excess phosphorus in the soil is that it inhibits mycorrhizae. You've probably heard about how mycorrhizal hyphae attach to plants and act as an extension of the root system, helping the plants acquire water and nutrients. Well, this whole process is inhibited when there's excess phosphorus in the soil, and as a result, plants have more difficulty accessing nutrients and water. The third downside is that many phosphorus fertilizers contain rock phosphate, which is a non-renewable resource that's in short supply and is mined at a significant cost to the environment. So contrary to the popular gardening recommendation to use phosphorus fertilizers to increase blooms and stimulate root growth, a far better recommendation is to not use phosphorus fertilizers at all unless a soil test shows there's a deficiency, which is usually not the case. If you live in the U.S., reasonably priced soil tests are available through your local agricultural extension. Soil tests can save you a lot of money by showing you what fertilizers you don't need to buy. And chances are pretty good that you don't need to buy phosphorus fertilizers. The second tip you can probably ignore is to buy ladybugs to release into your garden to control pests like aphids and mites. Of course, ladybugs are excellent predators and a great asset in any garden. Unfortunately, they tend to fly away when released and don't stick around in an open garden. Ladybugs can fly many miles in a day and they're predisposed to spread out rather than stay in one area. A better approach is to save your time and money and instead of buying and releasing ladybugs, create an environment in your garden that attracts them. Simply grow a broad diversity of plants, don't use pesticides, and don't rush to kill aphids when you see them. After all, they're one of ladybugs' favorite food sources. Instead, without letting things get too out of control, keep an eye on the situation and wait to see if ladybugs show up to take care of the aphid problem for you. Though we see some aphids in the garden every year, ladybugs and other predators always show up to take care of them for us. If the predators didn't show up and I was concerned about losing a plant, I'd simply blast the aphids off the plant with a high pressure garden hose. The next two tips can be ignored because they're not supported by evidence and they discourage people from using valuable free resources. The third tip to ignore is that you shouldn't use oak leaves as mulch or in compost because they're too acidic and will make your garden soil acidic. 
These do wonders for the soil and are an outstanding free resource for the garden. We use them as mulch and we add them to our compost. Though oak leaves are acidic, they don't have a significant impact on soil pH when used as a mulch because soil pH is resistant to change. And by the time the leaves break down, their pH is no longer acidic. Instead, it's neutral or even slightly alkaline. Likewise, adding oak leaves to your compost won't make your compost acidic because the decomposed leaves themselves are not acidic. They are relatively slow to break down, but you can speed this process up by shredding them if you'd like. I personally don't bother. So the bottom line is that oak leaves are a great free resource for your garden and there's no reason to exclude them from your compost and mulch. The fourth tip to ignore is to avoid using wood chip mulches because they attract carpenter ants and termites. Carpenter ants do bore through trees and dead logs to build nests, but they don't eat wood and they aren't attracted to wood chip mulch. This has been confirmed by multiple studies. Termites on the other hand do eat wood but aren't attracted to wood chip mulch. I consulted a number of sources on this topic, including the Garden Professor's blog Facebook page. Dr. Linda Chalker Scott confirmed what I learned from other sources, namely that you don't have to avoid using wood chip mulch if you live in an area where termites cause significant property damage. Termites are not attracted to wood chips, and to quote Dr. Chalker Scott, termites don't eat wood chips unless forced to, and they don't survive as well as with other food sources. The bottom line is that wood chip mulch is great for your garden. It suppresses weeds, retains moisture in the soil, is a great source of organic matter and nutrients, and it doesn't attract termites or carpenter ants. So by all means, don't hesitate to mulch with wood chips. I recommend using free arborist wood chips. If you live in the United States and aren't aware of a free local resource, there's a service called Chip Drop that connects gardeners with arborists to arrange for delivery of wood chips for free or in some cases a small charge. So there you have it, four popular gardening tips that you can probably ignore and save yourself some time and money in the process. To keep the video relatively short, I didn't go into too much detail on these, but if you'd like to have more information, please see links to my sources in the description below, including links to discussions on the Garden Professor's blog Facebook page. This is my second video on popular gardening tips you can probably ignore, and I hope to turn it into a series. My hope is that the series will help you save time and money so that you can focus on what really works. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more videos on how to grow a lot of food on a little land without spending much or working harder than you have to.